people, people, quiet down. Quiet down. I, I have a video that I want to watch and you guys are, are literally distracting me. I, I want to watch this video. It's about Balular. Balular is talking about the dark future of gaming. We cannot let this BS happen. This is the kind of video I want to watch. Because you know it's about to get good. You know that it's about to get good. So let's see here. The year is 2030. It's a rainy Saturday afternoon. You've just finished mining 30 obsidian ore playing Crypto Crush Saga Match 3 mobile game. You open up the Elder Mobile Game chains online and you feel a rush of excitement. Your buddy from school has spent the last two years becoming a master blacksmith and he has agreed to turn 10. Light red. <laughs> this is true. For the rookies, how are you doing? Obsidian ore into an obsidian battle staff. A huge upgrade over the mithril mace you've been wielding for the last weeks. It'll okay. take him an hour or so. In the meantime, you hop over to Clash of Guilds and use the remaining obsidian to upgrade your town hall to the next level. That should keep your village safe for now. You wish you could fast okay. forward time to tonight. Your guild has plans to go for a deep run in the wilderness in old school rune chains. And your prospects yeah, of a successful yeah. run and great loot have never been better. All members have been spending the past two weeks grinding for better weapons. And you've agreed through a vote to use the guild treasury to buy everyone a full set of red dragon hide armor. Tonight's objective this is to kill good, the level bro. 100. This sounds good. It sounds like the metaverse is really coming along strongly. They are all my games connected. Can you fucking imagine? Holy shit. I'd love that, you know? Uh, all of your gold that you make in WoW, you can use to buy stuff in Final Fantasy. And then if you don't have anything to buy in Final Fantasy, you can use it probably to buy some games on Steam. Why not? That, that sounds fucking amazing. I would have to get hate locked by the legs by Alexa Bliss or like, oh my Jesus. 128 Frost Giant hiding in the Cave of Sorrow. He has a 5% drop chance for an immaculate orb of brilliance of which there are only four in existence. The orb can be used as a power source for an upcoming space exploration game and should give you a great advantage in reaching distant galaxies first. A 5% drop rate is low, but you're feeling optimistic. In the distance, you hear a faint. Blockchain doesn't bring anything new to games. You shrug and join your friends in the Discord voice channel. Life is good. Hashtag blockchain gaming. Okay. This is a real post by Nicholas. Investing in blockchain games at Bitcraft. Okay. Beautiful. It brought a tear to my eye. Yep. The future looks so beautiful. What he all of these video games that you can play, like right now. Yeah, what he describes is all right. So it's about a NFTs. universe where everything is basically pay to skip if you want. I'm not even gonna. So just I, I don't even want to focus right now on the pay to win, pay to skip bullshit. Let's just quickly talk about the incredibly moronic statement that people make when it comes to nfts the argues what this guy's post just laid out there is that you know if you don't use the resources in this game you can always use it in another game that's so obviously bullshit by people who obviously do not understand how uh coding works so i'll give you guys an example if you and i made a game right so i made my game and you made your game you use the Unity engine to make your game, and I use the Unreal engine to make mine. Guess what? Our players can never use assets from either of those games in our fucking games. You want to know why? Because the code's different. It's completely different. It doesn't use the same code. A ball in the Unreal Engine 5 isn't automatically also going to be a ball in the Unity engine. Unless, of course, you make a whole new ball from fucking scratch. So you're basically going to have to have all of the gaming companies in the world work together to have all the same shit. And it must all look the fucking same as well. Because even two games made in the exact same engine is going to have trouble communicating with each other if it's stylized. So even if you have two different games, right? both made with the Unreal Engine 5, if mine is stylized, so I've changed my graphics entirely, yours is probably not going to work in my game.
because the styles are different. The code wouldn't match. Again, you'd come down to the same fucking problem. That's not how games work. Just because all of them are on the blockchain doesn't mean that their code is somehow suddenly the same, right? Final Fantasy and World of Warcraft look different because they were designed different. If you had a staff in WoW and you simply added that code to Final Fantasy, guess what would happen? Fucking nothing. Nothing. You'd probably crash the game because the Final Fantasy engine would be looking at you with confusion because it doesn't know what the fuck you're adding right now. You're just giving it code. It doesn't know what to do with the code because the code does not correlate to anything within the database. There's nothing like this thing in the game. It's moronic. It's... <sighs> we'll just leave it at that. I don't understand why you would need NFTs for that. If you could just make a global currency that carries over between games, there are multiple companies. Oh, but Jumbo, because if it's not NFTs, you can't claim that people own their own shirt, right? And one that makes no sense. These games would all have to be made with some, either with a very common architecture and pipeline so that all assets are interoperable, which makes like no sense if one say. of the games is a friggin' match three and the other one is basically Star Citizen. So that just makes no sense. So now you've got to make duplicates, you know, the, the same Obsidian, whatever, in every single different game. This makes no sense. Yeah, this will work. never happen. The whole point of blockchain, I guess for a lot of these guys, it's, you know, the decentralized element. So I suppose they're just thinking like, oh yeah, well, your Obsidian whatever thing is just an end. I don't think, I don't think on the face of it, blockchain video games is a bad thing. I, I don't think more video games is a bad thing at all. One of the biggest issues right now with blockchain video games is the fact that most of them focus on the earnings of the video game, so play to earn, rather than just focusing on making a good fucking video game. So as far as blockchain games right now go, they're worse than mobile games. Because a lot of those games, at least with mobile games, they to some extent care about the gameplay of the game. So they kind of try to make the game play f kind of fun just so they can convince you to spend some money. Whereas the play to earn model for blockchain, uh, they don't even give a fuck about whether or not the, the gameplay is good. It's all about, oh, you can earn money. And then, yeah, you are correct there, Cyanide. It's like bots just take over and eventually you have a bunch of bots running the same shit over and over again because they do it much more efficiently than any human being can. So it, it's just it, it's just moronic at this point. And also the technology isn't there. I don't know, and this would actually uh, sort of echo what someone else said in chat earlier. What is the point? Normal games are working just fine. Why do we need video games on the blockchain? W what's the advantage? Because they claim the advantage is you actually own whatever you get in the game. That's not true. Even if, by some fucking miracle, World of Warcraft moves to the fucking blockchain and now I own the mount that I got in the game, I only own the mount for as long as World of Warcraft servers stay alive. The second the servers die, great. I own a mount for a game that no longer exists. I don't know what I'm going to do with this mount. Because technically, I don't own it. I own it as long as the, the, the game still runs and then I can use the mount to fly on it. But that's pretty much it, right? <laughs> it's like, what, what the fuck is the point of all of this shit? It doesn't make sense. NFT. So, you know, because you own this NFT, you hook up uh, every game that you play to the wallet. Now you own the thing in every single game. But that makes no sense because all of these game companies would have to have a centralized strategy for how to deal with all of these NFTs that apparently are useful in the games. It straight True. up makes no sense. Yeah. From True. a technical perspective, from a gameplay perspective. I mean, because from a gameplay perspective, people are obviously just going to find the fastest way to grind the thing. Then they're just going to farm it out to the Philippines or something. As just we already saw it. with Axie Infinity. But, or they'll just do what is currently happening in Lost Ark, which is uh, just a haven for bots. Just bot paradise. Wait. you can. I actually heard that Lost Ark is like 50% bots at this point. Which is kind of fucking scary. How are they not doing anything about these bots? Is it purely because they're making so much fucking money that they don't care? Dude, that is crazy to me. You can do something in a video game to earn real money or real money equivalent. But that thing's really simple and it's in a video game. And that's on a computer. And I, I can program. Wow, incredible. It's almost as if bots haven't been fucking ruining every game with an economy. That's had any sort ah. of real world, like virtual or value, for 
I, hang on, hang on. Uh, about 25 years now? I, what? Do, do any of these people live in actual reality whatsoever? Thing is, you can get humongous amounts of MAUs pretty damn easily as Axie Infinity and the uh, funding environment that led to it getting such incredibly large injections of cash uh, as that proves. That's the thing. Obviously now we perhaps are entering the crypto winter. So who knows how so, uh, yeah. Crypto's dead, bro. Have you guys seen the crypto markets? They are crashing hard, bro. Like fucking hard. I am so glad that I got out when I got out, right? I got out before the first crash. And there's subsequently just been crash after crash after crash. And I keep looking at these people believing that they need to stay in. And I keep thinking, there's no value to any of this. It, it, it is, no, I made a ton of money off of crypto. A ton of money. I, I made about $1,000 profit on crypto. So it's not like I got rich off crypto, but you know, I made a bit of money. Um, so here's the reason crypto cannot make money. There's just no way that crypto is gonna survive as it stands right now. It produces nothing. It is just a bubble, it's empty. There's no real value behind crypto. There's no production that happens within crypto. So, th th thank fuck it's dying. Because, uh, yeah, things are getting a little bit too crazy. And and I think it's about time that the stupid people got sorted the fuck out. It's all going to go, also, but... Yeah, this actually reminds me of something that's already kind of happening in a weird way, right? Cyanide, just quickly on that point. Um, more criminals... Um, more criminals actually use normal dollars than they use crypto. In fact, very few criminals will will use crypto. Um, and the main reason for it is crypto can be tracked everywhere. It doesn't matter what you spend your crypto on. They can literally track it to exactly where you spent your crypto on. Whereas with normal money, if you have cash, it's untraceable. Like, you can prove that someone drew cash, but once they have the cash, they can give it to anyone and you would never know where that cash went. So that's actually not true, that crypto is, like, this great way to uh, for criminals to spend their money. Um, it doesn't actually work that way. Crypto is way less secure than just handing a, a dollar bill to someone. So yeah, if you're using it for nefarious <laughs> shit. True. I'm assuming you can use your... Pros, thank you so much for following. Really appreciate that. Welcome to the channel. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Because it was just priming people for the World Bank and IMF to get used to it because uh, that is what they want in the end, digital currency. Are you guys going to get some digital currencies? Little dot net bounce in Diablo Immortal, right? I'm assuming you could do that. I can't see why not. Do not know. Because you can buy stuff on PC, you should be able to use your battle net bounce. Mm -hmm. You can get battle net bounce through gold in World of Warcraft. Yeah. So if you're really good at playing the auction house in World of Warcraft, and you can, you know, make 10 million gold in a short period of time, then that can be, what is that, about 300k in Europe? Say you make 3 million gold, that's about 150. So I have a friend that plays the auction house in World of Warcraft. The dude has not bought a single Activision Blizzard game in almost, uh, I think, four or five years. He just has so much fucking gold that just sits on his characters and as soon as a new game comes out that he wants he just goes to the auction house buys a bunch of tokens sells them bam buys the game uh he's playing diablo immortal and he's buying shit off of diablo immortal uh with his gold although i think he's using the more nefarious gold selling method for that one like he is actually selling gold for real money and then using that for Diablo Immortal. <clears throat> no, you can't cash out uh, Battle.net money. Dollars worth of Battle.net bounce. And then you can go and buy $150 worth of legendary crests in Diablo Immortal. This already kind of exists, and it sucks. Yes. It's just using mm -hmm. battle made-up Battle.net money. And now they're trying to say, what if that happens? But whenever you, spend, whenever you sell all your World of Warcraft gold for Bnet bounce, you can then also use that in... Fucking star Citizen. Fucking Star Citizen or Starfield or The Elder Scrolls 6 or a new Skyrim re-release with all this shit baked into it or whatever other shitty mobile game. Who who wants this? Investors. Because all they want to do is create a fake economy that they can skim real money out of. 
while everybody oh, yeah. engaging in it essentially loses. Oh, exactly, like Blizzard are currently doing with the World of Warcraft token, and it's turn, t- turning into BNAP balance because it's $20 right, but, of real money yeah. gives you a WoW token, Basically. which gives you $15 of uh, game time, which is $20 Too going long, into the somewhere? Blizzard economy, 15 worth of value going to the player. Five dollars is raw profit for Blizzard, and that fifteen dollars never ever leaves the Blizzard yeah, the, ecosystem. The, the, the so that model. on a grand scale, yes, wonderful. I love that. The business model. Is- I mean, they're just diving into something I said a long time ago, which is uh, the WoW token is just one of the biggest scams in the video game industry, and no one seems to notice it. A WoW token buys you thirty days of game time, but a WoW token costs $20. Do the math. It doesn't add up. If you want to get 30 days worth of game time, it costs you $15 a month. But when you buy the WoW token, it's $20. Also, coincidentally, it's $20 that you get on your Battle.net balance if you buy a WoW token and you sell it for real money. Mounts in World of Warcraft are all $25, which means you need two of those bad boys in order to get them out. Dude, it, it is just a fucking scam. I'm not sure why Matt and Ballyler is only now sort of latching on to that. I'm all good with normal digital banking. No need for anything else. If this digital online banking is 100% 24-7 functional and mostly in each shop and markets, etc. Or pre-order Dragonflight. Yeah, sure. It's really simple. You just create virtual labor for a virtual economy for virtual currency. Yeah, but it's That's, not real, uh, though. Someone's buying with then, real money? Yeah, the only yeah. difference is the output of this virtual economy does nothing for society. Mm. Unlike the real economy, where houses get built, food gets produced, clothes get made, innovative new products come to the- Dude, it's actually one of the things that bother me most about this uh, metaverse bullshit that we keep hearing. You know, uh, Zuckerberg, I've spoken about the metaverse and how you're going to be able to build your house in virtual reality and you're going to be able to have meetings in virtual reality and all and work in virtual reality. And I keep coming back to the same question. Well, I can't live in a virtual house, right? I'm still going to need an actual house. Um, The job that I do, so let's imagine that I'm a shop assistant in uh, this metaverse, right, where I help people buy fake online clothes. Well, the people still need actual fucking clothes. So what exactly is its contribution to society? What, what exactly is it adding to society that suddenly makes it so that the real economy doesn't need to add those things? And the answer is nothing. The real economy still has to add all of these things. The only difference is that we now have sort of a fake economy on top of the real economy where people can pretend like they don't need all of these things for a while and then they have to go back and actually get all of those things in the real economy. Uh, my friend pre-ordered the collector's edition for $110, going to book him for a CAT scan now, Jesus. I suppose the jobs that people can do at home, they could do in VR, but would it actually increase productivity? I don't think it would. I don't think you... Uh, I would be surprised if actual productivity increased when people are doing their jobs in virtual reality. It just feels like it would create an extra extra layer of bullshit. So instead of just sitting at home, working on my PC, I now have to log into the metaverse to sit in the metaverse and work on the PC in the metaverse. Why am I not just working in the fucking on my PC to begin with? What is this extra step? that needs to be taken, right? I have VR, those glasses are very annoying and hurtful if you use them for a long time. I don't even have VR, and I can tell you now that it's not a train that's gonna pick up. The only way that VR and metaverses and stuff would pick up is if we had a chip implanted into our brain that allowed you to basically just be in the metaverse at any given point in time. So you just close your eyes and bam, you open your eyes and you're in the metaverse. Now you're in your brain, walking around in the metaverse, doing things in the metaverse, then people will probably not mind because it's a seamless transition. It's pretty easy to, to escape to that world. But even then, will it replace the real world? The answer, most likely fucking no. To the market. That's what it's supposed to do. But instead, what you do is you create a fake market so that then you can essentially capture the people in some bizarre form of weird servitude where mm. ideally... 
you know, they're going to keep on top of their health so they can stay paying for longer um, into a mm-hmm. highly, probably, I mean, if it's like that country, a uh, mm-hmm. highly corrupt uh, healthcare system that's ludicrously expensive. So yeah. you, know, you got that going. You have people working. Funny fucking side business here. Just very funny. What Baliller and Matt is sort of discussing here is exactly the scam that is NFT games right now. The play to earn model. Because the only people that truly get rich off of play to earn are the developers of the game. Go talk. Uh, actually, you can go look at the statistics, and there are plenty of those statistics. Um, I actually I have some numbers for you. So some of the top earners in some of the top crypto games on the market suggest that if you played for around 12 hours a day, 12 hours a day, seven days a week, you could earn anywhere from a thousand to $1,500 a month. Now, I ask you, unless you're living in like a backwards third world country like South Africa, you can't make a living on that. Like you guys from the first world, you can't make a living on $1,000, $1,500 a month. Because remember, this is now a job. You're working 10 to 12 hours a day, seven days a week for $1,000 to $1,500. So you're not making money. You're not getting rich here, right? You're barely scraping by. So who do you think makes all the money? The guys who make the game, they're fucking making, they have turned video games into the biggest scamars. And the problem is people are buying into it thinking they can get rich. Maybe eight, maybe 12 hours a day. And then instead of coming home and uh, making something with their hands, watching Netflix, cooking a, an exciting new meal, learning a new skill. Instead, you get them to then spend four or five hours clocking into a virtual economy mm-hmm. where they have no output, basically, that is, you know... Tangible? Sort of tangible. Um, I love how they show they the Diablo Immortal here <laughs> real while talking about this. And, you know, put it in to get better ahead <laughs> in this weird fake economy that's been created. Because right, um, that is. everything, mean, it just means nothing. It's a complete, absolute, utter nothing. What's funny about this is, what's the biggest scam? Play to earn? Or Diablo Immortal. Because <laughs> at least with Play to Earn, there is earning potential. Whereas with Diablo Immortal, there's no way of actually making money. There's just a whole lot of ways to lose money. <laughs> so I don't even know what the biggest scam is. That is being designed to capture people's attention so that, uh, you know, they can essentially work for the man and then come home and they think they're playing when in fact they're still working for the man. Yes. That's the whole point. Yeah, because play to earn is just working. That's yes. What, that's what it is. That's what a job is, is you're turning yeah. time into money. Sure. Playing to earn is your time is a little bit enjoyable. So it's a little bit like having a nice job, but mm-hmm. it's not even turning into money anymore. So it's not even a job. It's worse than a job. And it's turning people, into Oh, and these money. games also, the by the way, have a very being, short uh, lifespan. You know, almost the battery chickens of, of mm. wild gold farming, they will tell you that it very fast is not a fun job. Oh, of course, yeah. I mean, uh, that's even... It wasn't very fun and had loads of health problems for the people who are doing it voluntarily. Never mind the people who are doing it under literal servitude in concentration camps and prisons, I think, was one of the one examples. What? Yeah. There's a couple because I've been the fuck? preparing a video for the uh, Warcraft channel about this stuff. And there's literally, like, just so many documentaries, like, oh, yeah, here's the Chinese prison where all the prisoners, instead of doing prison labor, like, you know, what is it they do in the U.S., making license plates or, you know, grim stuff like mining or breaking rocks and stuff. It's like, yeah, here's a computer. You can play World of Warcraft in prison. Doesn't that sound great? Except you're not playing World of Warcraft. You're specifically farming gold. And then that gold will be sold by the prison Dude, warden. what the? And that'll be- Dude, what the- Fuck, bro. Like, are you serious right now? Like, what the fuck? Just like, oh yeah, screw it. We'll just make a bunch of gold so we can sell it. And Blizzard probably didn't care because every single one of those prison accounts had to be paid for. You know, it's $15 per fucking inmate. And there's probably thousands of them. So, uh, why not? We are restarting a company. <laughs> Uh, well, those who have money, they can do whatever they like with it. I, I can't judge them. Yeah, probably true. Go through a chain of people, end up being bought by some Westerner for like $15, $20 for the amount. The warden gets to keep most of it. And it's just a big exploitative system of virtual work because it has 
real value to someone. Oh, well, that's horrific. Yeah, but all that money's going into this. Sounds like a good fucking game. business plan, actually. Well, that's not going to lie. New games that are trying to do this. <laughs> so the, the first this? NFT game on the Epic Store is is on its way. Hmm. Yeah. So breaking NFT gaming platform Go Gala Games announces partnership with Epic to launch Battle Royale game Grid on the store. Uh. First NFT game integration between Web 2 and 3. Huge day for NFT gaming at hashtag Galaverse. Of course Woo! it is. <laughs> Galaverse. Yeah. It's always a hashtag too. Everyone has a verse. Uh, it's a so battle it's royale. Upcoming, Waste and shooter. Battle royale. Masses of gunslingers meet in solo duo or squad matches and test their skills against the backdrop of the Wild West. In grid, players need to saddle up and shoot up a storm as you uh, as you gun your way through town. Each match will test your skills and strategy against you. Blah, 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 blah. Shootouts, right? Uh, now, this overall is in line with the Epic Games policy of uh, welcoming blockchain games, assuming they meet a bunch of criteria and kind of follow the laws. Um, uh -huh. So, yeah. Well, what Tim is the criteria, though? A little bit about, um, you know, there's obviously a lot of scam stuff going on. Blockchain provided they follow the relevant laws, disclose their terms, and are age rated by an appropriate group. Though Epic's not using crypto in our games, we welcome innovation in the areas of technology and finance. Yeah, but this isn't innovation. That's the issue with crypto games. There's no innovation with crypto games. It's literally another word for Web3 is scam. Because what did they really do? I'm asking you, like, I'm asking for a friend, someone to fucking explain this to me. Because I'm pretty well versed when it comes to crypto, right? I bought into the, the scamass that is crypto for a while. I can tell you now. There's nothing new in Web3. It is effectively pay to win. It is effectively the mobile gaming scene with a different name. That's it. There's no there's no real breakthrough in Web3. I don't understand what the actual difference is. Sure, the game is on the blockchain. Who gives a fuck where the game is? It doesn't affect, like, oh, the game is on the blockchain. It's not on Blizzard servers. Yeah, I don't care. I, I genuinely don't care. I don't care where the game is hosted. The fact of the matter is, this is a stupid game. Does it make sense? And it also has the added benefit of being completely pay to win, but because it's Web3 and NFT based, obviously it doesn't fucking matter, right? Um, brands are how you doing, bro? Just a game with monetization, staple on top of it. So basically like every Web2 mobile game. <laughs> They're not down on that, but the legit stuff they're obviously a bit more okay with. Yeah. Now, we already know about uh, some things about Gala Games. So, number one, they convinced Peter Molyneux and various uh, IP license holders. Battlestar Galactica. Fucking kill me. Uh, the Walking Dead. That is uh, sad, that actually. They would be good partners to work with on video games because, you know, every video game outing of the Battlestar Galactica franchise, I guess actually Dadlock is pretty awesome, mm -hmm. but, you know, the other ones. I think it's... Look... I, I think I said this before. I'm okay with Web3 as a concept, as a technology. It's brand new. It's a concept that, in theory, will have a lot of freedom for humanity in the very, very distant future. When technology can actually catch up. When things like decentralization can actually exist. Ferorius, you fucking bastard. Thanks for the one sub. Really appreciate that. 36 months in a row. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I think there is a future for it. But that future is not now. Right now, it doesn't exist. It's a lie. It's literally all based on a lie. Cryptos. We've, we went through this a couple of months ago. Cryptos pride themselves on being decentralized. None of them are decentralized. They're incredibly centralized. Even if you just go to the point of exchange, the exchanges are centralized. The exchanges can make decisions. So you don't have decentralized currencies. You don't have currencies that aren't controlled by anyone. The currencies are very much controlled by a lot of people. The only difference is that in a lot of cryptos cases, the currencies are effectively controlled by the rich. So you've basically just traded the government controlling your currency to a bunch of rich fucks controlling your currency. I don't know which one is worse. <laughs> At least with the government, you could pretend like you can vote them out of power. Right? Whereas, with what are you going to do with the rich fucks? They're rich. They're going to do whatever the fuck they want. So at the end of the day, it's a nice technology. And it's in theory something that could really work. But 
I don't think human beings are ready for it, and I don't think the technology is anywhere near ready for mass uh, production or even mass rollout. Uh, Wave 3 has to evolve naturally. It has to come through usage and needs, not being forced onto the users. Branter, but this is the problem in the modern era with any new technology. We don't allow things to evolve naturally anymore. We just want to push things. And we've seen what happens whenever people push things. I mean, let's take, for example, the thing that have changed all of our lives, the internet. You've all heard of the dot-com bubble, 1999. The bubble that basically started the world on a downward, down, downward spiral. And that's the internet. We still use the fucking internet today. But because greedy fucks wanted to push things be before they were actually ready to be pushed, it almost crashed the world economy. This is, this is exactly what's happening now. Greedy Fox pushing something, and I know it's actually a little bit more nuanced. The dot-com bubble wasn't exactly that, but it come it boils down to the same principle. It's Greedy Fox pushing things that isn't ready, and it ends up fucking the rest of us. As an unfortunate face, you've paused them on. <laughs> Not good. Uh, I don't think this will help. Uh-oh. Uh, yeah, so that's just the sort of, I mean, shovel loads of shite that... That they make, so that's yeah. cool. Like, remember Fuck back dude, in the day when it was shovelware existed, games and it was well. maybe some like uh, I guess I'll use the meme example, Corey in the house for DS, and that was just shovelware. Yeah, but at least you bought it for real money. It's like, well, this wasn't very good. That was a good version of shovelware. Now this version of shovelware is somehow a just hellscape nightmare of NFT land. God. Yeah. Now a big thing here is that this is giving them kind of like institutional acceptance. Yeah. And that's why I think this is a decently major story. So they say this is a historic agreement. Two giants and different sides of the industry have came together to change the gaming landscape forever. We don't want that. <laughs> uh, Epic is well known for their uh, expansive reach, massive titles, and huge following. Gala is the pioneer of Web3 gaming. So that's essentially... Ga Gala is the pioneer of Web3 gaming. That's because you're the only one fucking doing it. <laughs> Oh my god, we're a pioneer, guys. We steal money first. Like, we came up with this steal your money first. Uh, you have to trust us. We're really good. It, and if you're maybe wondering you know, how what they a made bullshit this thing so to boast to about, bro. A real big video game and all of that. Why is this insane? Oh Why is this god. bad? Well, that's where we need to talk about grit. So basically, Gala Games took a nearly finished game and then they added their own spin. So, Team Grit are making the game called Grit. Uh, some pretty high profile names like Bob Berry and John Mavor, who worked on. All right, now, would you be willing to buy this game for $60? Max, thanks for the three bits, dude. Really appreciate it. Just look at those graphics, boys. Come on, boys. Look at those graphics. I mean, this is what they mean when they say they're taking the gaming industry forward, right? Just look at it. The detail, the, the anti-aliasing, the shadows. Th this is reality, boys. Oh, my fuck. This is what you call next level. Raza, exactly. This is it. This is it, boys. You know what? Fuck it. I'll pay $100 for this game. Easy. Easy. It looks fantastic. Bring on the Web 3 bullshit. I don't even know what these pillars are, but I'm on board with it. On Planetary Annihilation and Monday Night Combat are involved in spearheading this studio. The game is scheduled to be Steam Early Access January 5th, 2022. Looks real. It was then delayed January 25th. Uh, sorry, on January 25th, to a unspecified date. You may wonder <laughs> why. The six bits well, because then Gala announced the partnership with Team Garzi. Grit Thank you very much. Really appreciate February, that. But this connection wasn't picked up until the Galaverse on June 26th, 2022. Yeah. This is when they announced the first NFT drop for this game um, and then confirmed that Grit would be appearing in the Epic Games Store. Yep. So basically, they acquired or made a big investment whatever and now we are going to have uh nfts that are i guess galaverse compatible in grit all in the epic game store yep which that sounds so cool steam because steam doesn't allow nfts on the platform because steam kind of go what's the point of these is this good for the user you didn't literally say yes you tried to explain yes without saying yes so no get away yes so it's not good for the user what is so by the way, guys, I don't know if you knew this, but you see those little coffee cups that, that subscribers have? That's yours. You own it. We, you don't, like, really own it. As long as you pay $5 a month, you own it, insofar as it's next to your name. 
And also, if I changed it, you would lose it, but I promise I won't change it. So buy the cup now for $5 a month or a prime sub. Either way is fine. Um, and also then you get all my emotes, which is also yours. You, you own that too. Just because I fucking said a bunch of crap doesn't make those that crap true. I just said a bunch of crap, right? Oh yeah, you own this gun. It's an NFT gun. It's yours now. In a cowboy game, there were like three guns. How, how many NFTs does this game have? Three? Because that's basically the amount of guns that you had at the time, by the way. It wasn't a booming market for video for fucking guns at the time. So how many NFTs can you actually own of the same gun? It, it's stupid as fuck. Raza, thanks for the tier one. Gifting. Tier one sub, really appreciate that. Gifting those NFT cups, bro. Someone else now owns a cup. I appreciate this. Can I sell my cup in an auction house for virtual currency? Max, you can sell the cup to me. Yes. Basically, I will buy the cup from you for $50 that you give me. So you pay $50 and I take the cup. That's the deal of a lifetime. This is what the NFT market is, by the way. It's just a bunch of bullshit where at the end of the day, you're going to pay a lot of fucking money for shit that isn't yours. And, but you get to pretend at least that the shit is yours, right? That's really the good part. At least you get to pretend like this is your shit. No. Good, good for them. Uh, Venture Beats, uh, pay for access shill, Dean, Dean Takahashi. Uh, also wrote about this announcement and has previously interviewed uh, Gala Management, and that is what Dean is, make no mistake. I mean, it's even funny that, like, Jeff Grubb has a joke. Oh, no, 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 no. Both strong, uh, the, the, no, no, no. This isn't 800% value. Prime sub is 800% value. Now, if you sub to my channel with your Prime, that is 800% value. Actually, we worked it out the other day. We did all the math. And it's actually 1600% value. Now, I would share uh, how we got to 1600%, but it's like difficult math. You guys wouldn't understand. You're just stupid for that. So just give me all your prime subs. Uh, that's really all that matters here. You give me all your prime subs, you're going to feel fucking fantastic. Your dick is literally going to grow like two centimeters as soon as you prime sub. That's how much value this is. I'm, I'm not joking. Like, dude, I would not, be, I would not joke about this stuff. Uh, this is just not my way. True. Two centimeters. Yeah, bro. Like a full inch. Full inch. Well, a little less than an inch, but still. More than enough. Mm. At Dean Takahashi's expense <laughs> in his Twitter bio. Yeah. Because everyone knows it's Takahashi. He's a fucking joke. And I'm not saying that because he was that bad at Takahashi. As funny no. as that was, far more importantly, it is, uh, you know, just being fucking basically running defense for... Um, Oh, uh, your man in France, oh, David Cage. Know. Yeah. Uh, and all of his... Uh, I don't know yeah, any of these people are. down the nose uh, articles, uh, you know, on like NFT related stuff. So basically, like, look, if you are a Web3 gaming company, you, you know, Dean's your man. Go to yeah, Dean. He, he will be an uncritical mouthpiece for you, generally speaking. Yes, That's that is. seems to be how VentureBeat runs. That is the Takahashi special. So, Dude, this is the problem with modern day... Uh, modern day gaming journalism the gaming journalists are so fucking corrupt dude like the whole it's it's a grift that's that's literally all it's a bunch of fucking grifters um what do the ladies get i'm mel by the way uh bro sir the ladies also get two uh, two centimeter penis i don't make the rules that's just how it goes mooncake thanks for the follow really appreciate that welcome to the channel thank you thank you thank you but if you do sub hey that's two percent extra penis you can do with that whatever the fuck you want. Um, it's the problem with the modern day media. The gaming media is so corrupt. Do yourself a favor and the next time a AAA game launches, right? Go look at the reviews for a AAA video game. Almost every single one of the AAA video game reviews will be positive and if not positive, spun in such a way that it is less negative. Why? Why not? Because those companies don't make money off of you and me. They make their money off of advertisements from the AAA gaming companies. So they don't have any option but to basically give them good reviews whenever they ask for it, because otherwise you're fucked. Um, 
Truffle Shuffle Gaming, do yourself a favor and go look at those. Uh, go look at the IGN reviews for Battlefield 2042. Miserable game. Horrible. No one fucking liked it. Go look at the reviews. It states that, yes, it's in a bad spot, but then most of the article actually talks about all the good things that Battlefield 2042 is bringing to the table. Like how it's actually a very brilliant game, but it just kind of sucks in a lot of ways, right? So it's like that really beautiful girl. She's very fucking awesome, but she also has crabs. But don't let that put you off. Go fuck her anyways, because, you know, she's really beautiful. Uh, we're not going to focus on that. That would just be a byline in the article. Th that's what modern day video game journalism is all about. So uh, to celebrate the, the Galaverse starting today in Malta, Gala Games will be offering uh, a special sale of the Gunslinger box, which will unlock oh. one of 10,000 great avatars. Oh, Each character has its own specific perks and attributes that the owner can play as in the game. Attributes are generated. Fuck that. 10,000 avatars where every character has its own specific perk. 10,000 avatars where every single character has its own specific perks and attributes, I call bullshit. Unless, of course, we're talking about like 0.001% differences in attributes. <laughs> God, the, 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 the joke of this bullshit. ...and will provide a unique look to each character. Owners will be able to take with them, uh, you know, take them with them in game, uh, you know, their preferred loadout, a specific weapon skins, things like that, providing them an advantage over their counterparts. Ah, great. So <laughs> just, you know, out of the gate, this is the pinnacle of Web3 gaming. <laughs> that there are paid advantages to people who uh, have the the, uh, the more rare, the more interesting NFTs. Yeah. But, yeah. This is the thing with pay to earn video games, because you can't really call them pay to win, because they're pay to earn, right? They're pay to earn. I, I said pay to earn, that's probably even better, because it is technically pay to earn. Uh, but they are pay to earn, so they're not pay to win, because technically speaking, your job is to play this video game, make money, then spend that money on getting better at the video game. So really, that is still part of the core gameplay loop. You're not breaking the loop uh, when you do this. The reason we hate get pay to win games is because it breaks the normal expected gameplay loop. The gameplay loop is that I'm supposed to play the game and get better at the game by simply playing. Pay to win says you can skip all that playing bullshit and just buy the power. Like you can just skip all the gameplay loops. Technically speaking, with play to earn, you're playing the loop. The loop is you play the game, you get NFTs, you sell them on the marketplace, you get that money, you buy better NFTs so you can play the game even better to get more money so that you can buy the NFTs so that you can play the game more better and then get more NFTs and more NFTs and keep selling them on the fucking marketplace and then other people buy them on the marketplace and then eventually you can breed things with one another so that you can make even better NFTs so that other people can buy it on the uh, marketplace so and get more money. That's Wait, is the, that how much one the box loop costs? of yeah. these games. One box costs one and a half grand. <laughs> yeah. Wow, okay. Well, Jesus, one and a half so grand? So here's the thing that's crazy. It almost made me do a double take, but it is true. So uh, Gala have their own token here, the Gala token. So following conversion, uh, the 25,000 uh, Gala token that it costs to get one of these gunslinger boxes comes out to about one and a half grand for a generative character oh. with just under half of uh, that sort of cohort of gunslinger boxes. Uh, being available for purchase. Now, resellers may have it cheaper. This is the direct selling price. Dude. But essentially, like 5,000 plus of these. Have so in order to even get to play the game, it's going to cost you $1,500? Sold. Oh. That's the asking Jesus. price. Yeah, do you want to do you want to wow. get a small advantage in a game that isn't out yet? That's a Western Battle Royale. I mean, obviously, like the grid trailer, actually, it looks pretty good. Well, hard to say without actually seeing a bunch of gameplay, but like the trailer, like it looks like it's been developed, especially from like the Monday Night Combat. That's that's decent pedigree yeah. for a good game, but you just get owned by people who paid fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah, sounds like a great experience for me. Who will have a generative character that will look unique and seemingly will be able to just take their preferred yep. weapon loadout. Uh, load um, mm. So there you go. That's it's like uh, Warzone loadout dude. drops, except uh, fifteen hundred bucks to get that from the outset. Outset. <laughs> <laughs> Wild. Now, there is a bunch of confusion here because even on the Discord for this game, they're pointing out that, quote, the NFT stuff isn't going to be in the playtest version of the game for some time. 
So there is some capacity for change. Um, we can then see just the whole discourse going on. I'm sure if this is a game that you followed. I'm I wonder why that is. Why do you guys think the NFT stuff isn't in the playtest of the game? Any guesses? Like, is anyone here willing to venture a guess? It may have something to do with the fact that they don't want people to realize just how pay to win this game is before the game actually goes live, right? I mean, I'm just spitballing here. I, I, I could be completely off. I could be way off, right? But it is conceivable at the very least, right? Um, hey, Daquil, how you doing, brother? Asmund suits to be political in LFR gaming stuff. Um, pump and dump. By the way, Gala coin dropped from 70 cents to 7 cents since last year, December. Oof. No harsh, bro. <laughs> Fucking harsh, bro. We're very interested in earlier on this year before this was all announced, then you're probably thinking, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. My passion was... Uh, Did it just look so terrible, cool. though? Hmm. Now... There is a good bit of news here. The whole thing seems to have gone quite badly. Okay? okay. So there's the general dislike of the Web3 stuff being shoved into games, but uh, they actually fumble things even more because of a horse. It's so another oh, horse. Okay. It's another this horse. Is not armor this time. It's beautiful. It rhymes. Uh, right then, this horse. Uh, these were airdropped to convention attendees who paid eight grand to attend Galaverse. Yes, oh, all Galaverse attendees were airdropped their insane epic chest. Only 500 are in existence. And this is the insane epic chest. It's a horse. Ooh. It's a moth. Look, there's basically... Uh, the, there's quite a few ways in which um, gaming companies nowadays implement things like pay to win. The first option is to do what Diablo Immortal did, what this company wants to do, which is you don't actually have your pay to win things in the game at the testing phase. So whenever people are gonna start writing articles and you know before the game actually goes live, you don't have all of those pay to win stuff. So you get people to really write some cool, good stuff about your game before the game actually goes live. And then what Diablo Immortal did, which is another way to go about this, is you have so many layers of pay to win that eventually, you know, most people aren't going to get to all of those layers because there's just too many of them and they're way too sparsed out. So eventually, like in Diablo Immortal, there are some layers of pay to win that you only discover once you're max level. So you have to be level 60, you have to get into like the different nightmare levels and only then do you discover some of the layers and layers of pay to win that this game has to offer. Uh, so that's one way to do it. The other way, and this is something that EA actually sort of made famous you launch your game with almost no pay to win like just none it's just all good it's fine don't don't worry about it right everyone's happy and then about a month after the launch you start sneaking in your pay to win stuff i can't remember what game it was now where ea did this uh but it's recent it's like year before last i think EA did this with a game, where the game launched with almost zero pay-to-win elements. Oh, it was Call of Duty. That's the one. Fiscus Bagels, thank you for, the, uh, for being here, bro. How you doing, brother? Um, it's called Immoral, not Immortal. You are correct. Sorry about that. Um, but yes, it's, it's Call of Duty. So in Call of Duty, the game launched with no cash up. Like, there was a cash up, but there was always nothing on the cash up. And the game just seemed perfectly fine. Like, there was nothing to it. It was just play, 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 and have fun. And then suddenly, Activision announces that if you want a rectangle, so if you want an actual thing that aims on your screen, that's going to cost you $5. Because the original one was small and almost impossible to see, but then you could buy a like bigger one that you can actually see where you're aiming, and that would cost you, I think, two and a half dollars or five dollars for that shit. This is the other way of doing it. Why do they do it this way? Because after a month, all of the reviews have already been written and everyone have already bought the game. I believe we're going to see more and more of that happening. Over time, more and more often, this is what's going to happen. Games are going to launch with almost zero pay to win elements in them. And then a month, month and a half after launch, that's when they start pushing all of the cash up items and all of the pay to win elements because the reviews have been written now it doesn't matter what anyone says about our game it's already out people are already paying for it so this is basically what these companies are doing and the web 3 guys i think are the biggest scumbags of them all
model of a horse, and I, I guess some randomization for the bits that are on it. Awesome. And these people are stupid enough to think that flipping around a bunch of parameters for a model is like enough to be like, oh, wow, look at this. It's cool and unique. Mm -hmm. Who do you think? A lot of them? A bunch of fucking brain, that's what I tell you. Yeah. So it turns out that uh, these airdropped horses yeah. uh, were actually uh, horses that people had seen before on the Unreal Asset Store Ooh. for 29 bucks. So essentially what these freaking charlatans have done is they've just taken a bunch of horses and there's either two things that have happened. They've take, uh, taken all the different parameters and they've just said, okay, we'll maybe randomize the color within these bounds. We'll randomize what uh, you know, accoutrements the horses have and uh, we will just ensure that there are no dupes for the horses. Whatever. But basically, I don't think people are appreciating what this means. These guys on the store of the company that owns the Unreal Engine, they chose assets from the Unreal Engine to pretend like these are the NFTs that you can get in the game for, I think it was 5K. Like That's how disgusting these people are. That's how disgusting this shit is. It's ridiculous, dude. Basically, they just kept back. But I do have a question, a serious one. <clears throat> Should we legislate away the ability for stupid people to fucking destroy themselves? What I mean by that is, if you're stupid enough to spend money on a unique NFT. Do you not deserve the fallout that comes from that? So if you lose all of your money because you basically took out a loan, and by the way, this is not me making this up. I know people that took out loans from their fucking banks, loans against their homes to invest in the crypto markets. And when the crypto markets came crashing down, they lost fucking all of it. My question is, should we feel sorry for those people? If you were stupid enough to do that, isn't that like the trash taking itself out? Because it feels like it's the trash taking itself out. Like you don't even have to think about it. Like the trash taking care of themselves. Um, I disagree. There are mental health issues associated with it, and that's punishing it. I don't know about the the mental health issue, but even then, yeah, 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 I would say that it's a low enough number of people that it would still be the overwhelming majority would just be stupid people, right? Um, make enough to earn enough for an NFT, then yeah. Because there are people who are stupid enough to leave their car open, but I still support laws that punish people who steal the car. You can punish people who steal the car, but at the end of the day, you know, this wasn't theft. Because these people weren't stealing anything. They were just telling you that, hey, here's a unique picture of a monkey of which, of course, there's millions of other monkeys, but this one is a slightly different color than the other million pictures of a monkey. There was nothing stolen here. They were very upfront about the fact that this is not actually a unique picture. You were just stupid enough to think, oh my God, this slightly off-green monkey is unique and wor worth 10,000 fucking dollars, right? Ashwa costs 30 bucks. Um, and then a bunch of morons buy that for uh, eight grand each. Yeah. Nice game. Yeah, and this isn't, obviously this isn't, oh, we've bought a horse for $30 and sold it for 8000 We have bought the data for horses for $30. So it's not like they're making a seven nine seventy profit on uh, every horse. Cool. It's literally just we've bought the rights to this thing. And uh. this probably isn't included in the terms of service whatsoever for this. This is probably against the rules to go, oh, this. Can you actually buy the assets of the Epic Games Store and then just sell it again? I don't think you can. Like, those assets were made by someone and placed on the store for people to buy so they can put it into their games. I, I don't think you're allowed to resell those. <laughs> I don't think you're allowed to go buy them and then just sell them to other people. Pretty sure that's an issue. But even the, the free ones, I don't think you're allowed to resell them. This will sell. Oh, we'll buy this and then sell it again for an obscenely high. Well, what's funny price. then is that even on this, they've actually had to backtrack. They said the Grit Horse NFT pictured in the tweets was a placeholder asset, oh, the NFT, course. which was given away uh, for free and exclusive to attendees. Uh, I mean, the attendees obviously paid. <laughs> yeah. um, this will be replaced with the correct image when finalized. Which then just kind of begs the question where are you getting the horse from? Are you just going to model your own then? Um, 
Dude. How do Why are you giving people something for free if it's not even finished yet? Well, not for free. They're paying $5,000 for it. But if it's not done, don't promise it. Because that's literally what happened here. If we take their word for it. They didn't have the horse that they thought that the attendees would get ready yet. So they basically just picked the horse. They, they just said, yeah, this is the horse that you're going to get. Why did they just take a picture of an actual fucking horse then and go, yeah, we're going to give you a horse just like this one. <laughs> These thin games, which are then sold, but just selling them outright. I don't know. Just, that's the thing. I don't, I don't know if you're allowed to just sell those. Um, it would be similar to, uh, I think it's against the TOS for you to have a World of Warcraft subscription and then sell that World of Warcraft subscription to other people. So let's say, for example, you have a credit card. Someone else doesn't have a credit card. So you take out um, the, the subscription for this person on their account, but then they have to pay you $20 a month in order to play on your account. I'm pretty sure that's not legal. Uh, I'd have to dive into the TOS, but I'm I'm fairly certain that Blizzard would have an issue with that, right? Because it is exploitation at the end of the day, and you are basically selling something that you don't actually own. It, for example, in South Africa, subletting is illegal. You're not allowed to sublet your apartment. Even though you technically do rent the apartment, if you no longer live there, you have to give it up. You can't sublet. Uh, it's just because it's not yours. The owner has to have a, a say in whoever the fuck lives in their house. I think it would be the same with the Epic Game Store assets and shit like that. Did this happen? This, this is clearly ass covering in my opinion. Yep. Mm -hmm. So the game's not released. It's not an early access. The store page doesn't actually have a date. Uh, the blockchain integration actually isn't even implemented in the technical tests and betas that they're running. Um, is oh just God, quickly should basically thrown in by Gallo this because feels they like they're just rushing proper just you know, just trying to get in before the entire crypto market weird, crashes <laughs> just nft games you should get like this game out crypto is about to die so little to them yeah i mean i think it's the case of Gallo probably running around with a big amount of money from very, Gaming very, exactly. very interested people. And if these are go, safe, bro. Oh, can we get into this market early and, you know, dominate This game it looks so bad, though. Mega billionaires <laughs> off all of this. By oh, my people. God. Let's go. Okay, we'll give a couple mil to, like, a, a small game that looks promising. And obviously, if you're the developer of Grit or whatever else, and someone goes, hey, fire these in. We've got a good sound. Because all of these... Does it look that like, bad? really it good doesn't look arguments. that bad Especially if it wasn't for the fact person, that this is basically one of the kind of this is going to be one of the most expensive kind of games in the world like, oh, yeah, this, this i would actually think this is quirky funny sure i'd probably play it like, because it is quirky put down for if it was like yeah. a free and game this stuff free happens. battle royale probably play the shit out of it anything or need to do anything you know this game is going to be expensive money and then spin around in circles making loads of promises never getting anything done with it yeah that's what they do obviously for us they're promising a massive downgrade but everyone's just so swept up in all of the glitz and glam of the money, they don't really seem to give yeah. a shit. It's, it's just it's where the money's going. <laughs> I like yeah. how Matt just yeah, gets angrier and, and angrier even like every the Twitter single time they come at for news. ages. Just pointed <laughs> the old website that made no reference to the NFTs, no reference to Gala, and that has been updated. Um, but it's but it's weird, right? I wonder what it's like as a developer there. Um, Can't be good. There's more things happening. I mean, Zola, the payment processing company. If you've had a Twitch subscription. Yeah. You maybe will have noticed that Zola are, I don't know if they are still, but at least for a very long time, they were the payment provider of Twitch. Mm. They're still um, the payment provider. But, you know, they're, of course, launching into NFTs because, look, Absolutely. if you're in the finance side of games, then obviously these this is an emerging market. They're going to want to have a stake in yeah, there. Yeah, Zola has... Like, exactly. They call them the transaction engine and business engine, which are these just integrations and things for working on the back end of your game to try and monetize all of your, your games better stuff like that same way in the sense that you know you someone who makes a mobile game isn't deciding all of the ads themselves they'll hook into a platform that does it for them yeah that mm -hmm. takes all your data and goes oh we'll serve you these ads but it's the same but to do with microtransactions and businesses and stuff like that and this is oh where a while God, ago dude. we talked the about the whole world is a scam uh, you know that right practices that are a little bit behind the curtain stuff like the fact that probabilities from FIFA Ultimate Team's loot boxes could theoretically be di like dynamic and determined based on user player. In the same way, like a yeah. slot machine will go, oh, well, you haven't won so many times, we'll give you one now. But a lot more dynamic and a lot more kind of possibly predatory. 
It's the same stuff kind of going on a little bit behind the curtain here where it's not quite clean cut. Yeah. And now that transaction engine, those business engines are mm -hmm. being built to bring NFTs into the fold. Feels because good, man. Feels yeah, good. And I Makes think me happy. We take a look at one of these games, the deep integration that actually is out in the wild. Yeah. That is Nico, uh, Nino Kuni uh, Crossworlds. Mm -hmm. Where, uh, Didn't we yeah, watch a video Kuni's about Nino thrilled. Kuni, whatever um, the fuck? I feel like we watched this Net video. Marble. Oh, well, Netmarble uh, didn't end up making a video on it, but there's a lot of stuff going on with Netmarble historically that's very much like these are not good people to get in bed. Oh, who could have predicted this? So I'm reading up on what's been going on with the Nino, Nino Kuni MMO, apparently because of the crypto NFT stuff. Bots have infested it, leading to long queues for servers. Ned Marble Solution offer people a daily adventurous pass for $7.99 to bypass the queue to log in. Bro, what the f what the actual fuck? Like, okay, there's just dude, if you work on this game, you are a disgusting human being. Like, your game is bringing bots into the game, and you don't you, you don't think to yourself, well, we should probably fix the box bot issue. You're like, well, this is a money-making opportunity. <laughs> oh my God. Dude, what the fuck am I reading? <laughs> yes, they. what they've essentially done is they've monetized the bots oh, by wow. uh, creating the uh, the daily adventurers Jesus. pass for seven ninety nine to bypass the queue. Yeah. Well, yeah. That, yeah, that was a little bit taken a little bit out of context. It's actually a monthly battle pass that does have a premium queue element to it. Yeah. But the queue only exists because there are tons of bots. Because the the mm -hmm. queues are a lot bigger in the areas where you farm the crypto stuff. Surprise. So everyone's going, oh yeah, no, this is bots. This is a very simple game. Mm -hmm. This is a very simple game that you can earn money from. So obviously, like with World of Warcraft back in the day, like with Lost Ark today, people are just going to make bots. Yep. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. If you can, auto, it's the same way as like, Oh well, there's a load of money in that river. Oh, there's too much for me to grab myself. Because you're gonna hide over. I guess I'll autumn. I'll go and make a load of bots to you know go panning for gold. I mean, I Look, it's simple. We we have reached a point where principles and ethics no longer matter. Morality doesn't matter. The only thing that matters with the video game industry, and I guess it was always going to happen. Uh, video games is large. We've spoken about this before. The video game industry is larger than the music and movie industry combined. It makes a ton of money. And whenever there's money, it attracts the sociopaths. It attracts the scumbags. The scumbags have truly arrived, ladies and gentlemen. And the video game industry is the, the victim. These guys have no shame. They don't give a fuck. They don't care about your experiences as a gamer. They don't care about the, the integrity of video games. You know, have any of you ever watched the cinema, uh, the, the, the documentary of the start of Blizzard Entertainment? Like how Mike Morheim started Blizzard Entertainment. If you haven't watched that, do yourself a favor and go watch it. It was a group of nerds that just loved video games. That's it. They had no business sense. They had no sense of what business actually looks like. They just really liked video games. And they started in an office, a one room office, all of them just working on video games right out of college. They just wanted to make games. The very first game that they ever made, Warcraft, well, the very first mainstream game that, game that they ever made, Warcraft, um, they just wanted to play it. That's it, like literally, Mike Morheim says, they were talking about it and they thought it would be really cool to play a game like this. Why isn't there a game like this? And so they sat down and they actually started making the fucking game that they wanted to play. Didn't care. Was it going to sell millions of copies? Fuck knows. In fact, they didn't even know how to sell it. They just know that this would have been a cool game to play. And so they made it and people started playing it. People loved it. So much so that now, more than 20 years later, it's reigned for a long time as the number one MMO in the in the world. Those days are over. The people like Mr. Wilson, the people like Bobby Kuntik, they're not in this for the love of video games. They couldn't care less about video games. For them, it's about the almighty dollar. And anything they can do to get that dollar, even if it means 
charging $7.99 for a monthly pass so you can log in because the bots are too many, they'll do it. And they won't even fucking blink. Uh, why is Python, as I said, the first mainstream game they made? They made Rock and Roll Racer. They also had the Vikings game. And then that, uh, oh my God, what was it called? I want to say Black something, but I could be wrong. I can't remember what the game is called, but it, like 2D platformer type of game. Uh, Rock and Roll Racer was the racing game. Um, the Vikings was a 2D platform game. Lost Vikings was a 2D platform game. And then they had the n another game. It was like a punk rock shooter kind of thing. Um, 2D platformer, ladders and shit. Can't remember what the fucking game was called. But those were the three games that they had. And by the way, Rock and Roll Racer was actually a game that they produced for someone else. So they got hired to make Rock and Roll Racer on behalf of another company. But that was sort of to pay the bills. So they made Rock and Roll Racer. And then Vikings, Lost Vikings was their own game. But none of those games went mainstream. Warcraft was the game that went mainstream. And it was also the game that they thought this would be really cool. Let's see if we can make this. Um, and it, it just exploded. Right? Those days are long gone. That's the thing. In, in the Gold Rush days in the US, if people could have made bots to do that, they absolutely would have. So why not do it here? Obviously, that... The, the, the answer to why not is because it completely shits on the game experience for all these people and now they've accidentally and i imagine they didn't yeah. this but maybe thank they you massey they knew, yes when they made this oh there's a, there's a priority queue in the battle pass well do we expect queues in our games why would our game have a queue because of bots because yeah. we've looked at other games in the market because these people aren't stupid yeah, the people who design, especially the monetization stuff, they know what they're doing. Swanky Tiger, so there's a common misconception, but we'll talk about it right after this video. So keep that question, but there is a common misconception that I that I will explain. You get it from, even from people who were like 15, 16 back in the early 2000s and going over the real value of virtual economies. Mm -hmm. None of this is actually new, like in terms of the people who are behind the curtain. All this stuff has been known about and talked about and discussed internally since the late 90s. And it's just, here we go. They know exactly what they're doing. Jazz, are you serious yeah, about we'll that? Can you link it to me? Monetize the solution? And whenever you hear people talking about their mobile game spending as investing, that's language you'll hear with a lot of whales. Wait, really? This adds a level of, oh yeah, it is an investment because you're getting a real currency. You can really Mobile gamers out. believe they're investing when they spend in the game. Investing in what? Cash out. How many countries are going to turn around and say, oh, by our rigid definition, that is gambling. Yep. That's what I'm very What are you investing in? So in? It's a sort of thing where did they intend for this to monetize bots and stuff? Who knows? But it certainly is having that effect because, hey, I mean, Oh wait, Jas, I think I know what you're talking about, but just to just to sort of explain this. Um okay, so I think I know what you're talking about. Uh we'll get into it in a minute. I, I just wanna I, I just wanna finish this, but I think I know what you're talking about, and it's not actually as bad as you think. And if you're lost, so Swanky like, Tiger you're first and then your subscription Jazz. from every bot, that kind of sucks for you, right? Uh, so there you go. Now, um, Netmarble have offered real money through grinding in the game. That basically means there's a reason for all of this weird virtual work. That means there's an incentive for the bots. It means there's an incentive for people to just spend a whole bunch of money to increase their potential to earn uh, within the game. Um, yeah, so we've got, of course, the... The whole thing we talked about before this game, the Territe token, yeah. the utility token on the Marble scam, X platform. Bro. And uh, to get Territe, oh you can God. earn it by uh, doing daily your adventures or hunting, uh, hunting monsters <laughs> in the Chaos Fields. It's Chaos Fields, I believe, is where we're having cubes. Yep. Uh, so you get the Territe, which turns into Territe token, which turns oh. into Marble X, which then goes to a cryptocurrency exchange where you could then turn it into something a little bit more Bitcoin, uh, Ethereum, it, if you wanted, or yep. or then get that. go that way. Yep, absolutely. And now I remember that what cake, it bro. was that was a little bit shady about this that we didn't get to cover last time. And it was the <laughs> the literally against TO. I think they cancelled it because it was against Terms of Service in the end. But they were beginning an event where they would give people in-game items for giving for posting a screenshot of their own verified review. A five star review on the App Store wow. and the Whoa. Play Store. So they were very much wow. literally using the, the very like bottom of the barrel 
first idea comes to your head, obviously it's not good faith kind of tactics. Yeah, like incentivized reviews are not allowed on app stores. Yes, that's why they wow. ultimately aren't allowed to do it because they got caught yeah. uh, organizing this because it was just on their like public Discord they're doing it. It was like a full event, like, hey, we're running an event. Post a review and get some items. You're like, what the fuck are you doing? You're insane. And then there was something else as well. Oh yeah, it's just the fact that the game is actually- Dude, dude, I am so- <laughs> You guys need to play Cyberpunk 2077. Actually, you know what I need to do? I need to play Cyberpunk 2077 um, with patrons. I think that's what, that's the new, that's the next game that we're gonna be playing with patrons. Cause you guys need to see this shit. You'll be, you'll be shocked to see the shit that, that they sort of predict within Cyberpunk 2077. But so there's this one quest in Cyberpunk, right? Where you get, um, where you get sent to basically stop the private military of the United States of America. So yes, the United States of America no longer has a military. There is a corporation that's listed on the stock exchange. And this corporation is the private military. That's literally all they do. They're just a military company. You have to stop them from starting a war on the streets of Night City, which in the game used to be Los Angeles. So this company is trying to start a full-scale war on the streets of Los Angeles so that they can bump up their stock price because their stock prices are dropping. Like, that's the level of shit. This is what these companies are doing. It's just like, fuck the rules. We make the rules. We do whatever the hell we want. It's, it's in fucking sane, dude. <laughs> really fully pay to win as well. Yeah. In course. terms of the gacha stuff is equipment and gear and also the pet stuff. So you can invest, like you're saying about investments. Now when you're rolling gacha, because it increases your earn rate, because you earn more terite and you earn more of the other currency, I can't remember what it's called, when you're doing higher difficulty stuff or you're higher ranked in PvP, then it is an investment. The, it's company, like a, is, it is. the company is literally called Malitech. Um, yeah, that's the company's name is Malitech. Literally, imagine Diablo Immortal, but you could farm real money equivalent. And that's it. That's what this was. Yeah. The cyberpunk <laughs> like, dystopia hey, what, is real, your, yeah. Uh, ASICs and shit have meant that your mining rig is now useless. It's okay. Yeah. Do some weird botting on it. Woohoo. Yeah, so in <laughs> yeah, so instead of buying a graphics card to increase your rate of um getting currency, buy some in game items to yeah. increase your mining rate. You Not go. literally the same, but close enough in effect. Yeah. It's such a fucking hellscape, man. Yeah. So look, that's the hell that they want to create. Um, it is one we need to guard ourselves against. Um, as I said at the top of the video, it's that thing of they want to replicate the labor market, just mm -hmm. that there will be no real life societal or individual benefits of the <laughs> fake labor market that they wish to create. Because in order to create that virtual work market that they then you can't stop it. Like that is not. This is wishful thinking. You can't stop it with generating the best time, yeah. the best entertainment for your users. Mm -hmm. If that kind of game is what's making all the money, we're not going to have transformative experiences within gaming if that ends up being the predominant thing. Baliler, I get why Baliler is doing this, but I think a lot of people are missing the point. I'm, I've, I've accepted that it's just not happening. We cannot stop this, and for good reason. Reason number one, idiots are running around with way too much money. And when I say idiots, I fucking mean idiots are running around with way too, way too much money. People that in all previous iterations of humanity, so we're talking, if we go back even a thousand years, these people would have died in the fucking street. But because we live in a world where the scumbags and useless people in our society have every ability to take shortcuts, there are idiots with money running around. The other is that um, these guys are prepared. You think these gaming companies don't have l armies and armies of psychologists and psychiatrists and studies that back up exactly what they're doing, how they're doing it. Everything aimed at basically preparing us to get fucked. So 
this fight that we're fighting, this consistent push to try and guard against what we view as the true gaming experience, it's useless. It is useless. It can't be stopped. The end is going to be whenever these guys decide that's enough. Now, when do you think that will be? When do you think rich people will decide, well, that's enough money for one day? Uh, how do you stop this? Because, uh, dude, there were people who ate Tide Pods. That's all I'm going to say. There were people who ate Tide Pods. Do you think we stand a fucking chance in this war? Do you think we stand a chance? The reason that you see something priced as 99 is psychological manipulation. You see 499, you don't think five bucks. <laughs> True. <laughs> because games will just turn into some really weird virtual economy thing where, you know, it might not make sense for, uh, like, if there's a lot of, you know, maybe people uh, in more well off countries, like, maybe it won't affect us that much because maybe we'll still, you know, earn more money in a retail job and digit or something like that. But for a lot of people in, uh, you know, in other countries, we saw in like Venezuela. Don Blatt, very true. With Axie, very uh, true. The Philippines as well with Axie. <laughs> so I don't See, Venezuela is always the one they talk about RuneScape with, ah, where okay. a lot of people started farming RuneScape gold there mm -hmm. and RuneScape items because it was more efficient than going to work because of the hyperinflation in that country that yeah. had to deal with. So in a lot of countries where the... Uh, for you, it's actually far more successful than you might think. It's not just slow people that fall for it. It's conditioning. Uh, when's the last time you walked into a store and actually saw something priced as $5? I can tell you exactly when it was. It was this afternoon. There's a cafe um, literally just up the road from me. Like, walking distance, let's say it's going to take you two minutes to walk there. Uh, it's like a corner store, like an off-license if you're in the UK. Corner shop, uh, mini supermarket if you're in uh, the US or anywhere else in the world. Uh, it's run by, uh, I think, it's like a family from, I think, Pakistan. But all of the items in their store is priced on the dot. So they don't use cents at all. Like, every single thing is priced as four rand, five rand, six rand. Every single time I walk in there, it confuses me. It, the price confuses me. I look at the price tag of the item, and I'm like, oh, that looks so wrong. Because I'm so used to seeing things as $4.99, $3.99. So now when I see something as 5 it does have an effect. You do think, oh, that's 5 rand, that's a lot. You see something as $4.99, and you immediately think, ah, oh, that's not bad, right? It's not too bad. That's fine. Um, and I can tell you, as someone who worked in retail, whenever something was 4 rand, we would mark it to four ninety five. So it's always marked up. It's never marked down. You never mark down. You mark up. So if we... Did the pricing, uh, in the retail store that I worked in, it was 30% profit, right? So <clears throat> we took the base price, so the cost of the item, times by 30%, plus that 30%, that's the price of the item. If the price of the item came to like 4 Rand or 4 Rand 10, you'd mark it to 4.95. Um, so you're basically making extra profits on top of that. So, uh, the best is the gas sign that says 4999. Jesus. <laughs> and then I always see the price rounded up. Um, for you, you do see the prices rounded up. Like, I don't look at 499 and think, oh my God, it's not five, right? But 499 looks normal to you. And if it's five or 599, you are going to do a very subconscious double take. Remember, we're dealing with subconscious levels here. We're dealing with the parts of the brain that makes decisions without you actively being involved. So we don't make decisions actively. Most of our decisions are not made actively. Uh, the majority of all of the things we decide during the day is done just because why the fuck not? You don't even think about it. It just happens. Um, and that's the part of the brain that they focus on. Uh, whereas if you clearly overcharged for something, uh, let me ask you guys this. Uh, what is the price of a normal candy bar in your country? Like, what's the price of a normal candy bar in your country? 39p. All right. So the normal price apocalypse for a candy bar in England is 39p. <clears throat> now, when you walk into the store and you see a candy bar, for 39p or for, let's say, $1.50 or 1 euro. 
Do you think anything of it? So let's say there's a selection of candy bars and you see all of them is 39p, $1.50 or one euro. You're gonna choose any of them, right? If you were in the mood for a Mars bar and it's that price, you're gonna take it. But let's imagine you were in the mood for a Mars bar, you went there, but the Mars bar is priced at $3. Suddenly it's no longer just an automatic decision. You're not just walking in and grabbing the Mars bar. That $3 now has an effect. Because now you're looking at it going, Jesus, that's a lot of money. This is the thing. This is the conditioning. They condition you to accept that $4.99 is fine. Five, you start making a decision. Five, you start thinking, mm, do I really need this Mars bar? $4.99, you don't even think about it. Grab it because it's $4.99. It's always been $4.99. At five, you start thinking about it. At six, you start genuinely questioning yourself. Uh, so that's sort of the, the goal with these things is to keep away from the analytical brain. Keep it low enough to where the analytical side of the brain does not interfere with the decision making and it just remains automatic. Tiny amount that you'll basically earn in a, you know, on a weekly basis or a daily basis in these games where that will go way further in terms of your purchasing power. The, like the, they just They just want to capture loads of human hours and loads of human time to go into this system so that ultimately they can extract more money from the people who there are is doing, think about it all there you go you me. know what are maybe an upper quintile or something yeah. of uh you know of the economy and the more wealthy countries yeah. it's like mm -hmm. it's um, or me i still need to ask you have you f have you gotten my messages on discord um because i need to know what i need to send you for the tax shit to be taken care of uh and i've sent you a message on discord but i i, I haven't heard back plus i need to know what your percentage cut of that is going to be uh so what your cost is going to be for that imagine obviously you've got the whole problem with support thing where people were you know worried about oh that's fine me. i just wanted to make sure that you found that you got it like already developed countries because i wasn't sure and that's the thing if it was going through that because that's as long as i know it's gone through that's perfectly value. fine but imagine that but instead of it being a call center it's just 399.9 it's the, the same mechanic that? of oh the more developed <laughs> country price? will pay a disproportionate amount and that'll mean more profit from anyone there yeah but instead of it providing actual support it's just farming and game items, which are all. Obviously, I understand the oh personal God, value dude. one might have. We're in so to much trouble. Items in video games because obviously the that that whole thing is real value for a reason, but it's not real, real, real value, and that kind of happened by accident. We don't know what well, real value is anymore. That we what does it even matter? Things in game yeah. because the very same reason that you maybe spent a whole bunch of time to get the cool sword in World of Warcraft, now they are trying to turn that into a form of monetization so it's quite tricky uh, because virtual things can feel real did i feel defeated and whenever i watch videos like this man very open for extreme <laughs> exploitation in a situation like i this. feel fucking so it's kind of using what can make games and stuff like that like feel meaningful you know why we would really be lotus hiding on progress in world of warcraft or something and it's just using that for this like horrible twisted purpose mm -hmm. it's just creating an economy that serves honestly nobody no but the kind of super wealthy by yeah. just yep. creating this like humongous class of of, mm -hmm. of minnows and free to plays who on the back like of the poor weird play i like it own, but they're not i like it the true corporatist like, dream i i guess in a country where you can't find a job like that maybe it's going to be the thing that you do yeah that might be but, helpful individually yes yeah but you just like worry about what this like actually means if it takes off and ultimately like we're in the forefront of, of society, but how are you going to stop things it? Going on America's now, welcome back, bro. Ago, our parents could not have imagined. Or, and, under, or even understand today if you explain to them because it's yeah. so insane. And the same, like, we may think we're special. We may think we all know mm. how things are going to go and what it's going to be like, but maybe there'll be it's things worse that will happen than that, 30 or 40 Alton. years time. It is so much worse than that. be able to understand. Or if you told us they would happen now, we think it's crazy. But it does slowly happen, and the change suddenly gets so great that like you don't even know what you're looking at yeah. anymore. I mean, I've got actually two specific examples that might highlight this fairly well. One is from the Axie Infinity documentary that the... Oh, I can't remember what the... I don't know if the publisher or some are related. Some are definitely, literally, we are showing you the best version of this, the shiniest form of this, because it's in our incentive to do so. And it kind of... It was running as like a little underground or like a little sub-process in my brain. I was watching going, this is a bit weird. I understand mm -hmm. the whole positive element, the positive element of hey covid's ravaged this town 
so people are like afraid to go out and work because they'll get sick and you know people vulnerabilities might die and stuff like that so they've turned to making money digitally and they're providing this like false value for the wealthy west to you know yeah, but- disproportionately pay the wages but be- the problem with that entire argument is you're only making money as long as people believe in the bubble because my brother uh dove into axie infinity not to make money he wanted to understand how it works um there are axes. These things, by the way, these things on your screen right now, they're called axes. There are axes that trade for thousands of dollars. We all know that it's not worth even a dollar. Its actual real worth is less than a dollar. Maybe not even a fucking cent, to be honest. But it's trading. Like I think I saw axes on their marketplace for like $65,000 for an axie. We know that's not value. So the thing is that Yes, you're turning to this video game to make some money, but you're only going to make money as long as the bubble lasts. As long as everyone believes that this is worth $65,000, you're making money. And by the way, it goes much deeper than that. I I saw uh, <clears throat> there's a lawsuit against one of the NFT companies now where the owner of the NFT, like the, the guy who's the CEO of the company that brought out the NFTs, he was selling NFTs to himself, between him and his uh, co-creator, he was selling the NFT for $10. His co-creator bought it for $10. Then the co-creator sold it again for $15. He bought it for $15. And so they drove up the price to eventually, I think, $150,000 for this item. So everyone looking from the outside looking in, looking at the blockchain, goes, oh my God. God, people are selling this shit for $150,000. We have to get in. We have to buy now because this shit is just going to the moon. And as it turns out, it was just two cunts sharing money between themselves. Like they weren't losing anything. They were just driving up the price. All of these companies, I think, work exactly the same way. These guys were just stupid enough to get caught. Because no one was out physically working, the place was deteriorating. Like no one was actually holding up the shop so no one could come and buy stuff. So there were people starving and it's like the actual core kind of the work wasn't being done anymore because everyone was in their house doing this digital work it like it almost breaks the meaning of money in a way it does the money's all going into like fake things that aren't real yeah when there's real things like food and raw materials and clothing and shelter yeah that an economy should be producing so the larger this shitty not real economy is there's just nothing yeah, work that yeah. no one's getting anything out of. It's yeah. crazy. And all of that value is completely arbitrary from yep. the game developer because they get to twist and tweak the knobs. Obviously, when it's decentralized, that's not the case. But the initial stuff still is the kind of the, the game balance of Axie Infinity is. Yeah, but the problem with this, Matt, is that almost all of these games are centralized. Like, yes, if they were completely decentralized, then the market would decide what the price is because there wouldn't actually be the ability for any one person to change the market. So the market would decide price, uh, supply, and demand. I don't know of a single NFT game that is decentralized because all of them start with the company that makes the game. They control the currency within the game and they control the currency on the marketplace of the game, thereby making it centralized, thereby meaning that they and they alone have the incentive to decide the price. And Being fake is the role. perfect is response to that. Is, this all, is, it, is someone just making all of this up? What the hell is going on? Yep. But the other example I have is Ready Player One. And this is a weird one because obviously Ready Player One was this nostalgia bit novel written by... It was a, a cool okay movie though. Movie. And then they made a Spielberg movie out of it where Spielberg only directed like one scene. Everything else was just, <laughs> was just CG nightmare. And obviously, all the, all the things about that movie aside, the one thing that but always it was a good out to movie. Me is that Why is he slapping on the movie? Is, oh, this is the this is the metaverse. This is what virtual reality could be. Isn't this so such a utopia? Isn't this so perfect? Isn't this beautiful? Oh. Isn't this such an aspirational thing for society? And I'm just sat there going, "Did you watch the fucking movie? Did you see with the opening part where they're all in a trailer park that's stacked like skyscrapers?" Because no one has any money and no one's doing any work and everyone's useless. Apparently, most people didn't see that part yeah. or think about it. They just went, oh, but shiny metaverse, happy, happy. And it's weird because like, I was listening to, you know, uh, the Zuck. Uh, yes, on, he has a point. Um, 
on the Tim Ferriss podcast. And it's like, I know they are both really smart guys. Yeah. And Why they're, are they so stupid? <laughs> and they are talking about Ready Player One, mm -hmm. like almost as if it's a good thing. <laughs> and like, maybe this is people's heads just being so completely mazed by references that yeah. they're like, oh, cool. The Iron Giant shot those dudes. It's not, so I actually have, I'm not saying battle in them is wrong. I just have a different hypothesis. Um, I don't think it has anything to do with people's brains being morphed into references or anything like that. I think the answer is actually far more nefarious and also a result of conditioning over the course of many, many decades. Um, human beings have no understanding, no grasp of true value. We don't understand it. We don't know what it is. We don't know what it does. We don't care. Value in our minds is literally malleable. It's a completely malleable concept, value. So you can, you can like talk to fucking anyone, honestly, and ask them genuinely speaking, if you think an iPhone is uh, worth a thousand dollars. We've, we've discussed this before, a thousand dollars, most people would tell you, breaking down the numbers, an iPhone is not worth $1,000. It, it simply is not. There's no fucking chance that it is. A uh, graphics card is not worth $1,000. No fucking chance that it is either. But we're willing to pay those. We're willing to pay that for an item that does not equal that in value. A car is not worth what they're charging for it today. In South Africa, I told you guys, Cars are worth the same as mon as houses in South Africa. You buy a brand new BMW 7 Series, you're paying the same as you would for a house. And there are people who drive around with brand new BMW 7 Series. Something happened to us as a society. We've lost the ability to calculate value. It's just gone. It's as if it doesn't matter. Um, just the other day, I was standing at this, uh, it was at a bakery, and I'm standing at the bakery, and they basically have um, two loaves of bread. It's literally two loaves of bread, made exactly the same. One has sesame seeds on top of it, the other doesn't. So one has sesame seeds, the other one doesn't have sesame seeds. The one with sesame seeds, exactly the same loaf. How do I know? I literally asked the lady that worked there, What's the difference? And she's like, oh, this one has sesame seeds. This is the lady that baked the bread. Um, she told me they use the same dough for both. They just on one sprinkle sesame seeds and the other they don't. The sesame seed one is 50, no, it was, it was like 30% more expensive than the non-seeded loaf. Where the only difference is sesame seeds on top of the loaf. Guess which one is more popular? The one with the sesame seeds. It's more popular. How do you explain that? It's the same loaf. If you really like sesame seeds so much, just go buy a packet of sesame seeds and throw that on your fucking bread, right? Why are people, why are people paying that? Because we don't know. We don't care. We don't think about things like this anymore. Sugar gluten and dairy, free stuff, literally less ingredients, more price. Apocalypse, yeah, another really fun thing, right? Whenever they go, yeah, there's no dairy in this. And it's like, well, then why is it more expensive? It seems to me like you have one less ingredient here. It should be cheaper. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like maybe if uh, Ryan Gosling had a few Marvel characters and... Uh, and, and Disney Rose characters and things like that in Blade Runner, uh, you know, the new Blade Runner, the people would have thought, oh, wow, look at that. That's really cool. Wish I was born in that century with the flying cars. <laughs> it's like, okay, cool. The point has been missed. Yeah. Oh, my but God. But this is a case where the point can conveniently be missed. Yeah. True, Massey. I mean, just as so true. far as Zuckerberg and Tim Ferriss, I think it might just be a case of the emperor's, like, new clothes. It very yeah. much feels like that. It's like, why, why is no one saying this is fucking stupid? Because it really is. Jesus Christ. Oh my there God. you go. So uh, yeah. there's, a, there's some musings not on particularly NFTs. brief, but certainly a dive into the uh, the coming horror. Uh, let's very much hope this doesn't catch on. I think it's, one it's good going thing at least to. is... Um, it's going well, to. It's what they want. Guns. It's yeah. what they it work so towards. Far. Um, seems this stuff's going to be kept out of steam. 
And yeah. I think that is big. Now, there certainly is a generic concern that a single entity in the market being so impactful is like a kind of problematic thing. Here, it's a little bit weird. Valve have so much power. It's like a little bit uncomfortable they have so much power. But also, you have to like the fact that Valve said in the no. Right direction in this particular issue, so that is a good thing. Yeah, Steam will you have just to like the fact that Steam went for no, games. not an app store. Go fucking, like, no, fuck decade. yourself. That's what's going to be. Yeah, well, that's it. If they come for Steam, they'll have to go through Gaben and his big knife collection. So yeah. I think we'll all be okay. Right. Absolutely. That's the story, I suppose. If you found yourself in Crossworld somehow, how has it been? Yeah, please <laughs> um, let us know. And yeah, I don't know if you have one of these special horses, let us know. But I feel <laughs> like the people with the special horses maybe are not viewers of our channel. Anyway, no, the, the very least. The people with special horses, by the way, aren't viewers of anyone's channel. They're too stupid to work YouTube. They just know how to play to earn, bro. And they would be after this video. <laughs> yeah, uh, I hope we kept your brain tickled for uh, at least a little bit of time. Yeah. Uh, use this as a jumping off point to go and play some real video games. Uh, Two really good examples. Citizen Sleeper came out, mm. and I think if you're worried about spooky things that could be happening, go check out Citizen Sleeper. Should definitely disclose it is published by the same publisher uh, as us, but I do genuinely think it's a really good game. Its ratings are really high. Anyway, yeah. most importantly, that's a I real might game. I might give it a uh, go. You can also wish this The Pale Beyond on Steam, which is the video game that we are making as Already well. done, bro. So, Waiting for it, it to launch. Have a good day. See you next time. All right, this is a pretty good video. I mean, depressing as fuck, but pretty good.